I'm John Mangum, Executive Director, CEO, and holder of the Margaret Alkek Williams Chair at the Houston Symphony. Andres is an important part of the Houston Symphony's history. He was here as music director for eight years. He currently holds the title of Conductor Laureate. And I think it's important that the orchestra have these relationships with past conductors. Of course, later in the season, we also have Christoph Eschenbach, another former music director, returning to the orchestra. So we're thrilled to welcome Andres back, uh, you know, after a season off. Um, he's, of course, gone on to great things. He was just appointed as the music director of the RAI Orchestra in Turin in Italy and earlier appointed as the conductor of the orchestra and opera in Cologne in Germany. So he's, he's very busy and we're thrilled to have him back for two weeks. And interestingly, both of his weeks have historical significance. One of the things that's important to URI during his music directorship is for the orchestra to look backward to its history and its traditions in some of the programming that's offered in each season. And in this particular week, Andres's first week back with the orchestra, um, Andres will be conducting Shostakovich's Symphony No. 11, which has the subtitle, The Year 1905. And this is a significant piece in the history of the Houston Symphony because the symphony actually gave the United States premiere of this work under then music director Leopold Stokowski in April of 1958 and uh, went on from that premiere to make the first commercial recording of Shostakovich's 11th Symphony, which is actually still available. Um, you know, you can listen to it in Apple Classical or find it on YouTube, uh, and it's a great recording and a really important part of the Houston Symphony's history. So one of the earliest, I think the first commercial recording that the symphony made was with Leopold Stokowski, who was the superstar conductor and our music director at the time, and of a very important piece of music by one of the world's leading composers in the 1950s. So it's great to have Andres looking back at this piece and this history for his return. I know it's something he wanted to do during his tenure here. And of course, you know, we had all kinds of things come up, especially during the last few years of his tenure that um, interrupted some of those plans. And, and it's great to finally have it on the books for this, this return, this celebratory return concert. For me, Augustine Hedelich represents just the highest level of artistry. He's a consummate musician. Um, you know, the technique is flawless. He's so musical. You know, everything that he does is, is just absolutely right on in terms of realizing what, you know, I think as a listener were probably the composer's wishes in playing a wide range of repertoire. I mean, he plays everything from, from you know, Bach all the way through contemporary music, and, and he explores all kinds of interesting byways. And we're lucky that he's a regular guest here in Houston because he is just such a superb musician. And, uh, you know, every time he comes, he does something interesting. And so for this week, he's doing the Shostakovich First Violin Concerto, which, you know, pairs beautifully with the Shostakovich 11th Symphony, of course. Um, but it's one of these pieces that poses all kinds of daunting challenges for the soloists, especially in an extended solo cadenza at the heart of the concerto. So the orchestra goes quiet and the violinist is there alone with 100 musicians behind him and 2,000 people sitting in the audience in front of him. It's a very exposed moment. And what Shostakovich does is just a high wire act of the most death defying kind in this cadenza. And, you know, for me, that's just one of the thrills in this incredible concerto. And I can't imagine anybody playing it better than Augustine. So we're really lucky to have him.